Warm greetings to each and every one of you. My name is Paul André Zurashi. I'm the Archbishop of Gatineau. And this is Advent Readings, a series of presentations of the daily texts that are proposed for the liturgy of the day uh, during this Advent season. Uh, today is December the 12th, Saturday, December 12th. It is also the feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe, and uh, there's an option to choose special readings for this feast day, but I'm going to take the readings that are dedicated for the uh, Saturday of the second week of Advent as we continue our progressive reading of the prophets, mostly Isaiah and of the Gospels. Um, today, this is the first Advent uh, day that we, our re first reading is not from Isaiah. But it's from the book of Sirach, the wise, the Siracid, as we call it in French. It is a, a book that was written a couple of centuries just before the time of Christ. It was written in Jerusalem by a wise man. It's one of the books of wisdom where we really get to know the author of this book. You could say it's a compendium of his teaching, uh, of his uh, wisdom that he's imparted to probably generations of people. He's uh, elderly when he's writing this. It's like a you can imagine a, a prof who's given lectures for decades and at the end decides to bring it all together into a book. And this is the book of Ben Sirach. And, at, at one point towards the end of the book, here we're in chapter 48, he uh, has a series of short portraits of, uh, you could say, men. Uh, yes, they are all men, but important men in the history of Israel, in the Bible. And uh, one of the men he talks about is the prophet Elijah. Now, Elijah was not a writing prophet. The first prophets who wrote we're going back maybe 750 years before the time of Christ, or Amos and Hosea and uh, the beginning of the book of Isaiah. Uh, but a hundred years even before that, there was a great prophet whose name was Elijah, who never wrote anything, but his story is told in the first and in the second book of Kings. And one of the things that is uh, particularly relevant about Elijah is that not only was, it, was he a great and important figure in the history of Israel, many legendary stories were told about him and written down, but one of them was about at the end of his life, it, the scripture does not tell of his dying, but that rather he was taken up to heaven in, in a whirlwind on a fiery chi chariot. And this story led to speculation about, well, if he didn't die, God is holding him back for something. And slowly the, uh, the, the idea came that Elijah would come back to prepare the way for or to announce the coming of the Messiah. And so this, uh, this is what uh, Ben Sirach says. Let, let's listen to this reading. Uh, In those days, like a fire, there appeared the prophet Elijah, whose words were as a flaming furnace. Their staff of bread he shattered, and his zeal he reduced them to straits. By the Lord's word he shut up the heavens and three times brought down fire. Now, Elijah was uh, preaching at a time where the kings of Israel were really turning away from the covenant. And so he, he brought down, so the scripture says, he he, he caused um, a famine to make people realize that they had to change their way. Uh, he caused a drought. Uh, he brought down lightning from heaven in special situations. So he was a wonder worker who really was trying to impress on the people the need to remain faithful to the covenant. And we go on. How awesome are you, Elijah, in your wondrous deeds? whose glory is equal to yours. And here Ben Sirach describes the end of Elijah's life. You were taken aloft in a whirlwind of fire, in a chariot with fiery horses. You were destined, it is written, in time to come to put an end to wrath before the day of the Lord. Now, who wrote this? He says, you were destined 
it is written. Well, this was written in the last uh, book of a writing prophet, Malachi. And Malachi says this at the end of his book. He says that Elijah will return to, he says, to bring back the hearts of fathers towards their sons, to reestablish harmony, Malachi says, in order that the Messiah might be able to accomplish his mission. And so then Sirach is writing, he's quoting Malachi here. You were destined, it is written, in time to come to put an end to wrath before the day of the Lord, to turn back the hearts of fathers towards their sons and to reestablish the tribes of Jacob. Blessed is he who shall have seen you and who falls asleep in your friendship. So whoever sees the return of Elijah, he's saying, blessed are those who will see you, Elijah, and who fall asleep, who die in your friendship, in relationship to you, having received your word and having responded to it. Blessed are those who live this way. So in this reading, we're, we're getting strands from the book, echoes of the books of uh, Kings, echoes of the prophet Malachi, wrapping it up and saying how Elijah, we're expecting Elijah to return in order to announce the coming of uh, the Messiah. So let's move now to the gospel. We're at Matthew chapter 17, verses 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. This is, uh, in Matthew's Gospel, is right after the Transfiguration. Jesus was on the mountain, Tabor, with uh, uh, his three uh, closest disciples, Peter, James, and John. And he was transfigured and he appeared in conversation with Elijah and with uh, Moses. And uh, so as they're coming back down from the mountain from the experience, uh, these apostles, they ask Jesus, why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? So obviously this connection with Elijah, who's announcing, you know, the Messiah is very evident in the disciples' minds, in the people's minds, and because of this experience that they just had. Jesus responds, Elijah will indeed come and restore all things. This idea that Elijah would restore the relationships, the good relationships between families, between generations, between people in uh, the chosen people. Elijah will indeed come and restore all things. But I tell you, Jesus says, that Elijah has already come. And they did not recognize him, but they did to him whatever they pleased. And so also will the Son of Man suffer at their hands. Again, Jesus speaking of himself in a context of rejection and of persecution. He speaks of himself using the title Son of Man. And he says the Son of Man will suffer at their hands, as did Elijah who came back. Now, who just <laughs> was prophesying about the coming of Jesus and who was imprisoned and beheaded? It's John the Baptist. So then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them of John the Baptist. And so we see the connection here that Jesus makes between the mission that was always expected of Elijah coming back. Jesus is saying, John the Baptist has fulfilled this mission. He is the one who came to announce the coming of uh, the Messiah. But unfortunately, they did not receive him. In the same way that Elijah was persecuted, when he was ministering in Israel 700 years before the time of Christ, in the same way John the Baptist persecuted and killed, and Jesus is saying, and so will the Son of Man suffer at their hands. So there's the deep identification here of, you could say, the destiny of John the Baptist and the destiny of Jesus. And again, we say, well, why are we reading this during Advent time? Because Advent is, is, is the moment where we're preparing not just for the birth of the Messiah, but for his breaking onto the scene. And this is John the Baptist's role, is to inaugurate the ministry of Jesus. And so 
Christmas season extends from the, the day of Christmas until two and a half weeks later when we celebrate the baptism of Jesus at the hands of John. And so let's keep this in mind as we move forward in the celebration of Advent season, that it's not just about preparing to celebrate the birth of Jesus, the birth of the Messiah, but the entrance and the inauguration of the Messiah's mission, a mission that continues till today in his church and through his church in the world. And with this thought, I leave you till tomorrow when we will celebrate the third Sunday of the Advent season. God bless.